Hi, I'm E.D. Lewis, and welcome back to my channel for another Nocturnal Review. Before we get started, please uh, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Wattpad, um, BookBub, and Goodreads. You can read some of my writing on some of these platforms. You can see what I'm up to, what I'm reading, you know, fun stuff, you know, like that. Please also visit my author page, which is on Amazon. And if you're interested in my book, The Curse of Ridge, ha the Curse of Ridge House, a gothic novel, Hopefully it's not too glary. Uh, it is available um, in Kindle edition and paperback only from Amazon. The Kindle edition is only $2.99. Although later this month it is going on special for, I believe, $0.99. Cents. I can check in with you next time with that. And then also for $1.99 a little bit later in the week. Uh, later in the month, not the week, sorry. Later in the month. I'll keep you updated. Also, if you're interested in... Um, M.M. Erotic Fiction, I do have a short story called Alone with the Professor. It is 99 cents and available only in Kindle on Amazon. So check that out. And please also visit and like um, the official Facebook page of my uh, book, The Curse of Ridge House. All the links for these are down in the description. So, well, um... I'm just going to go ahead and get started, because there's not much else to talk about, uh, really, right now. Um, except for, you know, coming up, you know, what, deciding what videos are going to be what, and, you know, working on my current reading and my writing right now, and, you know, everything that's going on with it, you know. Yeah. A lot of stuff's going on. But anyway, um, this book review is going to be about the book In Her Shadow by Kristen Miller. Um, it is a gothic romance, gothic thriller, um, gothic mystery. It's actually a current book. It came out this year, 2020. Um, I actually found out about it on Instagram, and it was through um, Random House, because it's, Bal I think, ba isn't Bal yeah. Valentine Books, Random House, because I follow Random House on a Instagram, and I saw them advertise it, and I'm like, ooh, this was like a month or so before it came out, and so I was like, I'm gonna have to get that, so I kept my eye out, I waited for the release date, they did not have it at, um, Walmart, my local bookstore is a little bookstore, and they mostly have used books, but they have a great gothic selection, and uh, a nice horror selection, and, you know, mysteries, and all sorts of books, it's a lot of books, and, um, so I had to order it, and um, I was very excited when I got it. I did not read it right away, though. I actually started reading it on vacation. I made it part of my summer reading uh, TBR that's on Instagram. And this is it was the first one listed on their boat. It's not the first one I finished. Because I, I did a short story, this, another short story, and then two novels. And I'm almost done with that reading list. I'm on uh, Psycho was on one of them, which I've already done a video on. And currently I'm on The Haunting of Hill House, and I've got like 30 some pages left of that so i'll be done with that one soon i'll have to come with when you're reading so um this book is a retelling of um daphne du Maurier's classic rebecca it is a modern reimagining and retelling of this story um which is also what drew me to it because when they advertised it it had this really cool graphic that showed just the house in the woods and the woman and then the words in her shadow showed up and it was really cool and it said you know calling fans of rebecca and daphne du Maurier or something about that and so i'm like ooh, i gotta i gotta check that out i'm glad i did um like i said it is a retelling of daphne du Maurier's most famous novel um but it is told very much in a similar style to susan Howitch's book I'm always hoping I pronounce her last name right. Uh, the Dark Shore, which I've also done a review on, because it's told by various characters' point of views as the story unfolds. So, check that book out if you ever get a chance. And of course, if you have not read Rebecca, please do. Getting back to In Her Shadow by Kristen Miller. Um, like I said, it's a modern reworking and retelling of Rebecca. And a uh, similar style to Susan Howitch's book. I'm going over my notes. So the story is about Colleen Roper 
she's fallen in love with her boss, Michael Harris, who owns like this financial company and has become pregnant. Michael is separated from his wife, Joanna, but they are not divorced and he hasn't seen her for like six months since she left him. Um, at the time when she was, you know, five months pregnant. So there's a little bit of irony there. Uh, Michael brings Colleen to Ravenwood, which is the house that he and his wife owned, and he's been living in ever since, and they lived in, I think, for like f the five years they were married. Or, or together, whatever you want to say. Um, and the house... Um, their house is by the sea, so it's kind of like Mandalay in that way. And there's, across the street, there's a grove... And the grove is kind of important um, for something that happens a little bit later in the story. Um, so Colleen is brought into this world of wealth, just like uh, Mrs. De Winter in Rebecca. And she, of course, is completely overshadowed by Joanna, the Rebecca-like character, who appears to be the perfect woman. Everyone loved her, especially the housekeeper named Samara, who is, of course, the Mrs. Danvers character, and the chef, Dean. Colleen is given full reign of the house, except she cannot enter the Forbidden East Wing. So, of course, in that traditional Gothic style, there has to be the Forbidden Wing. Uh, but she feels obligated to keep things as Joanna had kept them. She finds her neighbors, the Martins, to be, you know, annoying and a little too perfect. Like, you know, there's more going on there than meets the eye. And not to mention a little shallow, especially the, uh, the wife of the, in the couple, uh, Rachel. But that was an interesting character. Uh, not altogether to me likable like a lot of the characters in this book there because they all have something it's like they all have something to hide so there's just a little something that makes them all a little slanted but interesting nonetheless no matter if you like them or not not that the characters are bad because the characters are really good it's just i don't know if any of them were actually like well i don't think i'd want any of them as my friends so um so anyway you know colleen does not feel like she fits in at all you know very much, like I said, like Mrs. De Winter. So things take a dark turn as Joanna's body is discovered in the grove across the street. So this is where the grove comes in. Uh, she's, you know, she's found by a woman who's walking her dog. Her dog takes off and starts digging up and they find her body, you know, her body is unveiled. Except for there's no baby in her womb. And there's a bizarre religious art, uh, art article with the body. And she was an atheist. So, big question is there. You know, how'd she get there? Who murdered her? And, you know, what happened to the baby? And the whole mystery of the religious artifacts. So that's all I'm going to tell you about the plot. So you got to read the book. Um... I do want to make a comment about the house Ravenwood. I feel like that has been used so many times because there's a book by Marilyn Ross called Mistress of Ravenswood. Uh, I know it has an S in it. And there's a book called, there's an old book, excuse me, called Ravenwood, an old vintage one. I've not read it, so I don't know what it's about. It's called Ravenwood and it's a gothic. And there's a more modern book, I think, also called Ravenwood. And so Ravenwood seems to be a very popular name with gothic mansions, so... You know, um, I really enjoyed the book. It was very suspenseful and it had a great atmosphere. Of course, it was, you know, very, it was definitely a Rebecca like book, just like, you know, the dark shore is very much a Rebecca like book. It's, you know, has some, has some similarities in plot and stuff. Um, but, uh, and it's, you know, it's very intriguing and stuff, and it's definitely a page-turner with a twist at the end. Very much like Rebecca has a twist in it. This has a twist, a very bizarre twist, um, that I did not see coming at all. And it did leave me a little confused. And I had read that um, some people... Well, hold on. 
No, I'm going to go ahead and, and say that now. I had read some review, like, glimpses of the reviews trying not to spoil the story for me, which none of the ones I saw did spoil it, except for they said that the ending was inconsistent with the rest of it. And I thought, well, maybe, maybe they missed something or something. You know, I had no idea what they were talking about. They did, and that is the downfall of the book. The book is good, it's just there is a downfall. And it is that twist. Um, doesn't quite match with the rest of the book because it's... I don't think there was really any hints in there to suggest it, which definitely made it, you know, like, you didn't see it coming, but still, it didn't make sense for the characters. I'm just going to put it that way. I feel like if she could have dropped a few hints, like, even if they were subtle hints and we just, you know, thought, oh, nothing of it, and then we would have went back and thought, oh, that's, that makes so much sense now, you know, when we thought about it for a moment, but uh, she didn't, and so I think, that could have been remedied if she'd gone back and added, like, some subtle details in there that, you know, we didn't think any, you know, like, eh, that doesn't mean anything, and then it blows our mind. But the ending is definitely a mind blower for me anyway. It, it was, I did not see it coming, and it was quite a twist. I had several occasions, like, I think this is the killer. I think this is the killer. Maybe this one's the killer. Maybe this happened. And I thought, and then I kept flipping back and forth. I thought, no, this one has to be it. And so it had me guessing. But um, a good book. I highly recommend it to Rebecca fans. I highly recommend it to gothic romance, thriller, mystery, you know, so on and so forth. Check this book out, especially if you're a Daphne du Maurier fan. Uh you know, even though it does have that unfortunate thing about the end of the book, it's still, um, it's still really good. It kind of makes you wonder what's going to happen next. And so if she ever does write another one, which I don't think she will write another one, you know, taking place in, you know, as a sequel to this book. She has another book coming out, which is previewed at the back of this book, but I didn't read it. But it looks like it might have a similar setup when I flip through that part. So, but anyway check out you know Kristen Miller's In Her Shadow came out this year um is very good book highly recommend so check it out that's all from me uh for this video so I hope you enjoyed it please hit like and subscribe and please leave a comment as long as it's appropriate pg g pg 13 but nothing higher or above um even if it's just to say hello so you know I'll say hello back so, um, rather than that, you know, have a good evening and keep well, uh, be kind and courteous to others. Black lives matter. Um, and, uh, you know, stay safe. So, all right. Bye-bye.